I'm Abby Dacey. I'm a principal at Malam Architects, and I'm here to share the Lake Ridge Middle School project, which is in Lake Oswego, Oregon. For Lake Ridge Middle School, the site itself influenced wood, so there was an interest from the start in mass timber. Hi, I'm Robert Smith. I'm a principal with LMN Architects, and I worked on the Founders Hall project for the University of Washington's Foster School of Business. Wood was selected for this project largely because of that material being a physical representation of their commitment to how business can make the world a better place. My name is Lauren Peebo. I'm with HGA and I served as the structural engineer on the Gibbons Center for Arctic Studies in Mills Hall at Bowdoin College. Bowdoin has been operating as a carbon neutral campus since 2018. So Mass Timber provided us an opportunity to speak to their values as a college and their commitment to sustainability. When we were engaging early on campus and talking to students, we started to find that kind of the most beloved and utilized learning spaces were warm, they had natural finishes, they had access to natural light. And we started to notice this repeating pattern of what spaces were students using the most. And that kind of became a driving idea as we worked through this project. So keeping that exposed timber structure to bring the warmth of the wood into the classrooms and into the study spaces. One of the things that really I think, led towards how we articulated wood in the project was biophilia and thinking about the emotional connection between students and their brains. And the idea of biophilia is becoming really popular in educational spaces because we're recognizing this need to create softer places that students can really identify with and feel calmer in and reduce stress and all those things that we need. For a business school, you know, it's a, it's a little bit less about when students have to be there like it might be for a middle school, but it's a lot more about how much we can get them to be there. And there was a goal for this project that it would be this you know, unleavable building full of sticky spaces that would encourage the students to come and stay for their student work and have these great um, informal interactions with each other and you know the warmth that the wood provided to the experience of being in the building um, was just a big part of what made it successful. We had a really unique opportunity to highlight the beauty of wood in places that we might not normally see it. And, and we had a chance to really be innovative in our use of mass timber. So really anywhere that we could use wood, we, we found a way, <laughs> which, which posed some interesting engineering and design puzzles. Um, so this project is one of the first in the country to use CLT shear walls to resist lateral forces, um, which required a lot of research to fully understand and analyze. And that actually started as us as the design team thinking, oh, CLT shear walls aren't codified, we're going to do them out of masonry. And the contractor said, you know what, I think we can source them. Can you figure out a way to, to make it work? So we said, sure. And then we also employed things like long span glue lamp roof trusses to keep the exposed structure in the museum galleries, in the event space. Uh, we also incorporated it into CLT stairs to kind of focus as, as design centerpieces in both buildings. For Lake Ridge, I think the most unique aspect of using wood was that we are in Oregon, we're a high seismic zone, and early into the project, the community actually really asked us to look at resiliency and making a building that could uh, be built to the level that it could be occupied post a seismic event. That meant that we we're using seismic risk category four. So that is, you know, a level above what a typical school would be at list risk level three. That led to some innovation. In particular, our gymnasiums are wood framed buildings. So to have a large gym and a small gym that are framed with LBL timbers going up, they're balloon framed, and then they have uh, plywood, just regular plywood being used as that shear component. There are a few paces, you know, it's a 5B construction type. There are a few places where we had to have fire rating. And so we had to work with um, ICC evaluation service to get confirmation that we could basically add a layer of plywood inside of a rated wall assembly. We did have a challenge um, code-wise with our building. We had gotten already through schematic design and we had already located some of the important pieces of the building before we made the structural decision. And one of those pieces was an assembly space that's really important to the function of the building, but it wanted to be up on the top floor on the fifth floor. Uh, so we found that that wasn't allowable in Type 4 HD, but we did find a great hybrid solution that overcame that. We built that portion of the building in a, a concrete frame 
And it's just, you know, kind of a small piece of the building, but it allowed us to get that assembly use up on the top floor. But then we were able to get double duty out of that concrete and act as the, the sheer structure for the building. And I think the pairing of the warm timber with that cool concrete is actually, you know, a big part of what the interior feel and the interior design of the building ends up being. And I think it worked really well together. One other actually interesting code solution we got to as well, uh, working with the city was how to get an interconnected stair all the way up through those five stories of the building. And this was a, a kind of a cool thing that we got out of the timber with the deeper glue lamb beams framing the stair opening. We were able to use that just as an inherent smoke baffle. And so we were able to do that stair through the building, which is like a really big part of the, the student experience of that interconnected building um, without creating an atrium condition because of the inherent depth of those beams. So you had a similar experience, Robert, in realizing that we needed to add a smoke baffle and the architect came uh, back and said, well, what if we just make those beams a little bit deeper? So they're just a few right. inches off. And so that was a really nice way to, to kind of marry form and function. Being that this was one of the first commercially scaled mass timber buildings in the state of Maine, we were faced with the task of educating authorities about the fire safety of, of mass timber. We brought in other industry experts like Woodworks to, to help the state understand how mass timber fit within their fire code and, and what the fire test data showed. Um, and eventually it all worked out. We, we got to a point where, where everybody felt comfortable, but it was a, a big challenge and, and felt daunting at times. I would advocate for using wooden buildings primarily because we can get that human feel, that biophilic look and our structure and sometimes our acoustics and you know our finished material all in one product. So it does us double duty. And so it's from a school standpoint, it's actually reducing the number of materials we're using, which is reducing our first cost. Um, and I would finish by saying, you know, some people get scared of wood in buildings in terms of finished material, but I'd say it holds up better than almost anything else. There's something about these beautiful timber buildings that just you know grabs the imagination of people. Um, we've had you know architecture student groups from around the country come to visit the project. We've had um, the Department of Energy bring a conference to the project just to show off what you know low carbon construction looks like. Just lots of different people that get excited by how these represent the future, maybe of what our built environment should look like. For Bowdoin particularly, I think that project kind of speaks to the viability of mass timber projects, maybe outside of the Pacific Northwest. Bowdoin itself, I think, is a great example of how a mass timber project can be economical and sustainable, even when it's really far outside of kind of the traditional North American mass timber hubs. Creating buildings that are of a place, you know, is something we talk about doing, but so often say a school building might just be built in a very international style or we call it California school or whatever. And it has no real bearing on where it is. And this, you know, Lake Ridge Middle School is in a place it couldn't be anywhere else. And it feels like it's in that place. And I think, you know, when we think about what happened in the project and what's going on in architecture, we've gotten quite good at solving that operational carbon issue. And I think that the uh, embodied carbon is, is the next frontier 